Welcome to the Draft Brewery's review of all the commons for t Cons of Tarkir. Basically, uh, I'm into doing video reviews for these now instead of written. It's more fun, quick and easy. Um, and I decided to wait till I got some time under my belt playing these cards, both in uh, drafting and sealed a lot. I played some PTQs and some online drafts and a lot of team drafts with friends, but then also some standard popper events. Try to get an actual read on the format since uh, I think a lot of my opinions have changed since I've been playing with it a little bit. But so let's start at the beginning here. Anok Bondkin. This card is very good. It's awesome in draft and standard popper. It is only a combo with the green 3-3 three, three, that gives things reach so you can have some reach first strike guys you don't have flying you don't have death touch um, and you don't have life link so there's less to be gained by him but uh, in standard popper and just like in draft I like outlasting him once and then just a 3-2 first striker is very good um, combos very well with this card feet of resistance while um, I've I've played against pros and they've actually missed this and I've missed this too in drafts is uh, somebody you know tries to make a trade you play feet of resistance and if you have a bonkin in play you basically get to eat their guy for free a lot of the time so yeah, very uh, in my order of you know ranking of cards in a five four three two one scale is five is you know very very much a, a badass or a build around me card kind of like a meta game changer. Four is a playable card it should go in a lot of the decks that play that color. Um, a three is a borderline playable, meaning there's some decks that might want it, but not all. Um, so it's not always playable. And then a 2 is uh, borderline unplayable, meaning almost no decks want it, but the occasional deck will, but it's usually too niche or uh, not super powerful. And then last is strictly unplayable, as in maybe it's a sideboard card, but it's probably never getting played otherwise. So yeah. So Bonkin... I think he's, uh, depending on the deck, he's a, he's between a 3 and a 4. He's close to a solid playable. There's just a lot of other good 2-drops. And he doesn't have evasion, so that's kind of a knock against him. Alabaster Kirin, love him in draft. Standard Popper, I don't think he's going to be big enough. Uh, right now, Lightning Strike It's the easiest way to kill him. And 4 mana is kind of a lot. So there's, there's better flyers like Wingsteed Rider and um, you know, the a Crow and Skyguard and stuff like that in white decks that are way more aggressive. Defiant Strike is a pretty good card for the white aggro heroic decks. Uh, imagine this card was printed in Theros block. It would be pretty solid, I think. Um, so I imagine that card will see some play because it basically gives all your heroic creatures either, you know, 1-1 one, one token or plus one plus one counter and this effect for essentially free. The problem is, is if you're playing against like control decks and your opponent's not trying to block you ever, if they're just playing removal spells and bounce spells and stuff like that, this card doesn't do that much and I'd rather have uh, God's Willing or Johnny's Presence or Mortal's Resolve or Ranger's Guile, anything like that. So I think it's playable but there's better cards so I wouldn't fault other people for playing it but I will not be playing it very much. Erase, uh, sideboard card against bestow decks, but even then, uh, it's probably not that relevant. It's, when you have cards like this that are so narrow, it's just not super needed. Um, again, Feet of Resistance, pretty good with the Bondkin, but I'm actually not playing it in my white build, Agar Heroic builds, because I just think God's Willing and Johnny's Presence are better. Um... Firehoof Cavalry, strictly unplayable. That thing 
like how is that even useful to have fire on its hoofs it'd just be like a hot potato jumping around like a crazy horse how is this guy even staying on it I don't get it <laughs> how's he doing that um this guy's student really weak card sure you can prowess it and turn it into a 2-4 or 3-5 for 2 but it just requires so many other things to go on to make it do anything without it comes into playability or any real way to you know no evasion or anything it's just interesting I think the art is kind of interesting right here his elbow sleeve I didn't even see it at first the first time I kind of looked at this card I just thought it was like camouflaged in and he was kind of like a real ninja who had the ability to like go all reptile invisibility but no it's just a dumb little brace for his arm so he's not as cool as I thought so yeah he's like one to two pretty bad kill shot is a very good card in a deck that wants to kill attacking creatures problem is once someone knows you have it they can play around it and then you're stuck holding three mana open which is a lot and so I'd usually rather have effects like Glass Breath and Pillar of Light. It's good that it can kind of kill anything, but... And there aren't very many creatures that have activated abilities, so... It's good against some decent aggro decks and stuff, but... I think it's a little expensive for what you're trying to get at. But if you are trying to play some sort of like Blue-White or Esper Control deck... I can, I can see it uh, coming in, but... Out of the sideboard, potentially maybe it is good enough so I'm not I'm uncertain on that one yet uh, most of the decks are aggressive but having the timing always have to happen when they're attacking not good for you I, I usually kind of like to take the damage hopefully have them tap out or uh, play another creature or just have to like you know try to t kill or bounce their guy at the end of their turn so that I can land something good on my turn. But yeah. Mardu Hate Blade. This guy only goes into the Warrior theme deck. And there is a Warrior theme deck with Rush of Battle and Mardu Horde Chief. Basically, the new concept lets you play mono warriors and some other tokens that aren't even warriors, but when you're giving tokens plus two plus one and then gaining a lot of incidental life. It's pretty powerful. I think this is a very weak card. There's a bunch of 1-1s one -one for 1s with Death Touch, but uh, he is good at stopping some green guys and whatever from attacking. But, uh... Definitely not the kind of card that I'm trying to build in my decks in this format. The Mardu Horde Chief, I can get behind him. He reminds me of a Tended Knight. Uh, it just requires a little bit of raid, but white decks are all, at least most of them, are trying to be beating down. So I really like him with, like, raise the alarm. So you're going to be attacking on turn three, even when you have no, no creatures in play on turn two. And he helps convoke. So you have two guys that can come out of it. And a 2-3 is pretty good. Um, just creates a lot of stress on the opponent's removal anytime you get an incidental creature. Rush of Battle. Again, I haven't built the deck yet. I did play against it once where the guy played Mardu Warrior Tokens with Ponyback Brigade and stuff. And if he just amassed a bunch of creatures, it was pretty good. Uh, so, be wary of that. This card is, again, a considered... It's like a borderline playable. It's very niche. It'll go into that one deck and probably nowhere else. Sage Eye Harrier, this card's just unplayable. Too slow and too expensive. Doesn't do enough. Same thing with Salt Road Patrol. I don't get this card. It's only ever gaining first strike and reach, and it costs too much. So, not for standard popper. Siege Craft. This card is great. Uh... I kept bringing it in in a side draft with my, or like a moto draft 
when I had a bunch of my friends watching, and I put it on Alabaster Kieran, and it was almost unbeatable, except until it got kill shotted. But yeah, this card's unplayable. Smite the Monstrance, it seems okay, but it's kind of expensive removal. But a combination of Last Breath, Pillar of Light, and Smite the Monstrous kills everything except for like a 3-3, three, three, or a 3-2, or a 3-1. So there's some merit to having some of this card in the sideboard potentially against other decks. War Behemoth, just unplayable. It's too slow. Morphs are just not good in this format. There's Magma Spray, Debilitating Injury, Freakas Cure. Just don't play Morphs, especially when they're not that much of a payoff when you flip them. Cancel is... Eh, I think it's playable. It's not particularly good, but in like a blue-red or blue-white or blue-black control deck, it's playable. Nothing exciting. It actually doesn't make the main, I think, in any of my control decks except for my Esper deck. But yeah, put it in that. It's it's okay. A Crippling Chill, if you try to go really aggressive aggro tempo deck, I think this card is potentially very good. It's just competing with so many other cards uh, that I think it's hard to put in your main, especially when someone could be playing control or they could be playing tokens and it just doesn't do that much. But again, against like green decks or something, this card's pretty insane. And I've loved it in draft so far. But yeah, I would not be main decking it anytime soon. Disdainful Stroke, on the other hand, this card is perfect. This is, I'd rate this like a playable card, but it's almost always something you want in your sideboard because the metagame right now has very aggressive white and mono red and uh, just kind of aggro heroic decks that this card is kind of a blank against but it's very good at stopping uh, a lot of things in the format mono black has phoenix and merchant control decks have uh, treasure crews and you know other things that just always set you ahead on mana and it's kind of a hard card to play around, so I, I've i been loving this card in the sideboard, and then when it comes in, it's it's just right. Body Minus Spring, I tried this guy out first in a three-color deck, but it's not very good, because you have to like pay two and tap sack it. Sometimes you just want the O3 wall against the heroic decks to save a lot of damage, so you don't even want to get rid of it, because otherwise you'll start taking a ton of damage. But yeah, he has been underwhelming in my opinion, so I would not play him in any green-blue X deck. You have dual lands. Force Away is competing against Voyage's End, so Scry versus the potential to loot is interesting. I think a lot of the times the loot would be better, but having four mana or four power in play much more difficult much more difficult so I would not be you know playing this over uh, Voyage's End but once you have four Voyage's End there's potential that this card is uh, better then it starts to compete with Void Snare so it's just interesting uh, if you know if you don't have any creatures of power four more in your deck I would just recommend Void Snare since it's a little bit more mana efficient and even, but you're gaining instant speed flexibility with this, so maybe that just makes it better. Unsure. Glacial Stalker. I'm never playing this in any deck. Unplayable. Wind Scout. This card's playable, but it's easy to kill. It does have the ability to do a lot of damage in the air. Um, just wouldn't fault people for playing it. But it's not what I'm looking for as a win condition in many of my decks right now. Because it's just so easy to kill. And it can't really attack through anything with it, even if you trigger prowess once or twice. Like, for it's just unexciting to me. But some people will play it. I know there's a Jeskai tempo y list out there. But if I'm playing an aggro deck, I'm definitely not playing three colors. I don't think the payoff is there with any of the morphs or 
anything. You don't have charms or anything, so. We'll say flock again, just not a good card. Ever. Just to get in the way, this card is actually really great. It's great in draft. Could be good in standard popper, but again, it's just too easy to kill. I don't want to invest six mana in two turns to just get it killed. So, not what I'm looking to play right now. Scald skin, two, yeah, two mana intensive. It's kind of like Crackling Triton, but evasion, but not that great. Now, Singing Bell Strike, this card, if you, if you ever played Oppressive Raise, which I almost would fault you for because I think that card is close to unplayable, this card is just one more mana, and it gets basically two of that effect. Um, there's no creatures really with activated abilities in the format, so that part of Oppressive Raise is kind of irrelevant, and it costs six to untap. I mean, it's, I mean, do you guys remember Paralyze? Paralyze was one black, but it let them untap for paying four. This costs six. Like sometimes this card is just terminate. Um, other times it does nothing because you're in the late game and they can just untap it. So this this card belongs again very niche. It's very borderline uh, playable, but it only belongs in the fastest blue aggro decks, which could exist, but. Again, not not what I'm trying to play in this format. Tagum scheming. If you're an all-out mill self mill deck, this card is still not playable because it doesn't draw you a card. And the only good delve card in the set, well, I guess there's a couple. There's the green and black flyer and four four, but uh, yeah. Anyway, let's skip the scheming and go right to the cruise because the cruise is the actual. Five star BA of the set. If you're not trying to break this card, I don't know what you're brewing. But uh, it's breaking every other format, legacy and modern, and it's not quite standard. But yeah, uh, I'm looking to combine things that just get in the graveyard early, which for every deck includes Evolving Wilds and Traveler's Amulet, and then just cheap spells whether they create creature tokens, things like Raise the Alarm or Triplicate Spirits or whatever, or have removal or bounce spells or counter spells, things like Nullify, Magma Spray, Lightning Strike, stuff like that, and then you just refill, and then you just head on cards and feel great. Just play it. Like, experiment with it. Try to break it. I've tried Mono Black, Splash Blue, uh, blue red control, blue white tokens. Those are the three best decks I've found with this card so far. So I hope people try to break this card as I have because it's insane. We fate. All right, like this card is awful. It's inspiration, but you can't even target your opponent for the win if they were at two or less cards. So. We Fate is not a card I'm looking to play. There's tons of other cards that draw two cards that don't cost four mana. And I don't always have to leave mana open for counter spells. So. Not looking to play it. Wetland Sandbar, yeah, never playing it. Now, World 1 Adept, this card is actually very good. I'd say it's a strong playable. Almost a build around me card because there are no edict effects in the format right now. Dead Drop is an uncommon and whatnot. So, yeah, can't be playing. You know anything that deals with this necessarily. So if you give this unblockability with Aqueous Form, give it Life Link with Eternal Thirst. Uh, I like to enchant it with Nimbus Niad. Like it grows pretty big and it can't be dealt with very easily. Um, besides, you know, blocking or a Death Touch blocker. So giving it Evasion is the primary goal, and giving it Life Link lets you race anything. I'd experiment with him in your control decks as your finisher. And now he's in my Esper deck as a finisher. Bitter Revelation. Now this card's great. This card's more like, you know, as you know, divination is to read the bones is you know, bitter revelation is to foresee, meaning the second one in the analogy is always better. Read the bones is better in divination. And foresee is probably better than this, but this card is pretty great. 
especially in draft, but I find Read the Bones to be a lot better than this card, actually. I mean, it costs a lot, and there's not much you pay off for an extra two cards for Delve. So I'd rather play, like, Sign of Blood, Divination, Treasure Cruise, and Read the Bones over this card. So not really going to make the cut ever. Built hitting injury is fantastic. It's basically just dead weight, costs twice as much, it's still good. Can be found with Hilliod's Pilgrim. Um, it's not the best removal spell in the format because it's sorcery speed, and you can't get it back with Oromancer or anything, but I still think it's a fine card. Uh, it's playable, but it's not really exciting, but you should play it if you're going to be playing black against aggro decks because it's basically injury and freak is care. Disowned Ancestor, another outlast guy that does nothing but it can gain first strike or reach. Um, there's no real payoff to him. I would not be playing him. He's good against aggro, I guess, but there's other cards I'd be looking for. Dutiful Return is March of the Mish. March of something. March of the Returned. And I would just play a Font of Return. Get three guys back. So don't play it. Cure Dreadmaw. You do not want... There's no incentive to play Defenders right now. And there's other ways to gain life in Mono Black. And this is a green black card that doesn't put a clock on them. So you don't want it. Pretty much ever. Now, Harold and Krumar Bonkin. This guy... It almost makes the cut in the Mono Black devotion deck but it's too susceptible to dying as a morph and at 5 mana it is pretty big at 5-3 but there's just so many death touch creatures and ways to kill this guy that I would just play other things over it most of the time but it's close that's like borderline playable if some people want to try it that'd be fine Mardu Skull Hunter this card's pretty good it's playable there's not that many good one drops in the format, but I do like there's like Freakus Chosen and Typhoid Rats. So you can definitely get some guys that like to attack. Same thing with that. Uh, what was it? Mardu Token deck. It's pretty good in that deck because it's Warrior. So I like it there. And it also, Ravenous Rats effects are just great. Always being able to interact with your opponent's hand is fantastic. So. I like to see people trying to play him, even though his body isn't that great. Still decent. Molting Snakeskin, this is a pretty unplayable card. Could put it on that Hexproof guy. Eh, could be a one of in that kind of deck with Heliod's Pilgrim and the Hexproof guy, but uh, really, you just want to gain life. This card I would not likely play. Rack Shasa's Secrets. Cards, if you're self milling at all, it's just a little bit better than Mind Rot. If you're not, you should just play Mind Rot. But I, did, uh, I can't think right now. Just I don't even remember if Mind Rot's in the format. Either way, not likely to play this card unless you're playing against Control and the sideboard. It's fine. Right of the Serpent, Flesh to Dust is the best destroy target creature effect in the format. If you're trying to kill huge things, this card is basically worse than Sip of the Hemlock, and that card never saw play, so... It's moving on. Rotting Mastodon. This card's great. If the 8 toughness was relevant for anything. Uh, but it's not, so you don't need him pretty much ever. There's no zombie themes in this either. This card, on the other hand, the 8 is not represented in toughness, it's in the mana cost, and he is not a delve payoff card you're going for. While it can stop a lot of things on the ground, it's kind of easy to interact with, just to counter it, just to bounce it, or, you know, e evasion gets through it, so. It just gets stuck in your opening hand too much, even in draft, so. Not excited, won't be playing it. Sadissi's so Pet, there's no real payoff for morphs. Uh, there's no secret plans or trail of mystery, so this card is just kind of underwhelming. Won't be playing it. Ooh, look at this load time. Look at that internet struggle. 
Well, we got Unyielding Krumar. No, again, it goes in the Warrior theme deck. Any, so does Sultai Scavenger. Just put all the Warriors. It's, the deck builds itself. Play Mardu Warriors, and I think that's an interesting deck that I'd like to see people play. Throttle's too expensive. Lash of the Whip never saw play. Act of Treason is potentially a decent sideboard card, but probably not. Tracker's awful. Aerostorm is like actually decent. It's just a little expensive. But the fact that it can kill four or five toughness creatures or dome four or five damage to the face gives it enough flexibility that it's potentially good. Problem is sorcery timing hard to cast doesn't have the ability to really get people very easily. And once they know you have it, they can play around it a lot more. And play more defensive, keep their life total high. So, not what I'm looking to play right now. Uh, I'd rather play that uh, the red font that deals five to the face. If you're trying to just like burn people out with spells, because that's a lot. You can pay two and then four. So this kind of a little expensive for like a mono red finisher against control decks. Since we no longer have Razor Tip Whip. Um, so, Barrage of Boulders, this card's only good if you have a creature with power 4 better because Scouring Sands is just a better sweeper because it scries and costs one less for one toughness creatures. And Moto just loves to crash. So yeah, I would not be playing this card ever. Bloodfire Expert, same thing. Uh, potentially could go into some sort of Savage Punch or Prowess type deck, but I think it just gets killed too easily and isn't good enough on its own. When there's tons of like 1-1 one -one tokens running around, wouldn't be playing it. Same thing with Blood, Bloodfire Mentor. Ability, nobody played Research Assistant. This card just costs too much to get anything out of it. you got to do other things with your mana. Bring low, again, lightning strike costs two for this effect. The fact that this can kill a five toughness guy if it has a counter on it is pretty good, actually, against heroic decks. So imagine they have like a five five wing steed rider. You know, your lightning strike just gets laughed at, but this card can actually interact with it. So for that reason, I am kind of experimenting with it a little bit in the my sideboard. Uh, I think just killing heroic creatures before they grow is always what you're looking to do, but sometimes they grow out of range and then your burn spells are irrelevant, so you have to rely on bounce spells, or maybe something like bring low. It's, it seems like just close to being good enough that I want to try it. Canyon Lurkers, never playing. Trades with everything, doesn't do anything. Irrelevant. Okay, so Leaping Master, again cost too much to give it evasion. Just play Welkin turn instead of him. War Shrieker. This card's pretty good in that Mardu deck because it helps you get the mana for Ponyback uh, Brigade. And it's... 3-3 three, three is just solid. That really only costs you one mana because then you can play another 3-drop like Mardu Horde uh, Horde Chief, the one that makes a 2-3 and a 1-1. One, one. Shatter's not playable right now. I suspect... Next set or two, there's going to be a lot more artifacts running around. So I think Wizards kind of like kind of likes to, kind of likes to do this: is put a shatter completely unplayable in the format, and then have the climate change and get a lot more artifact creatures showing up in the next set, and then shatter will become an interesting uh, semi-playable card. So yeah, the Yeti here. Too easy to kill, costs a lot. Not what aggro decks are looking for. Swift kick, like this card's so bad. Pit fight only costs two mana. Giving a creature plus one power is not what you want. You want like toughness boosting a lot of the times because a two-two fighting a two-two is like common, and a three-two is not what you want. You'd rather have a two-three to fight their two-two. So two more mana is insanely expensive. Nobody's going to play that. It's awful. 
Tormenting Voice. This card is pretty great. Basically, you do take away the double red effect of Wild Guess. And you add the fact that there's some Delve cards in this set. And right now, I'm actually liking this card slightly more than Font of Fortunes. Because I can get two additional cards in my hand right away. And I can enable my Treasure Cruises a little bit better. So I'm liking this card. Uh, sometimes it's a blank when you top deck it, but then you just wait for your next draw step, so it can be a little rough sometimes, but in general, if you're playing Treasure Cruise, I like Tormenting Voice as a sidekick for it. So yeah, it's it's borderline playable, I'd say. Divination and whatnot is just better. Font of Fortunes is close to being better too so yeah so you just got to try things out when you when you aren't sure you just got to try them both out and see what happens trumpet blast pretty great in that tokens deck we we're talking about even in mono red it might be pretty good when you have a crone crusader and heroic guys so he doesn't trigger heroic though which is one of the problems you'd rather have like dragon mantle titan strength and all sorts of other bestow guys or whatnot. So, could be good, but probably not. Valley Dasher. I like haste creatures, and I like Mono Red having as many haste creatures as possible. This one runs into trouble every now and then, but uh, I've had some draft decks where this guy's just great and gets in for a lot of early damage. And that's all you're really looking to do. And then if you have enough burn spells, you can burn him out of the game, or you know, you get him for two every turn by just killing their creatures every turn. Um, so, he's pretty good with Hammer Hand as well, so I'd be looking to test him out in some mono red decks. I typically don't like to play mono red decks because they're a little too simple for my taste. I mean, standard popper, who are we kidding? It's simple enough. So I always try to brew. I'm trying to. I'm always trying to brew. That's why I go through these set lists. I was trying to brew something crazy. Now I did see some mono green decks, some aggressive decks that looked pretty good. And Alpine Grizzly is actually solid because it's very good with Savage Punch. You kill their guy and beat them for six on turn four. It's a very strong play. Um, so this guy's playable, but only in that mono green deck or maybe some sort of green red dagger deck. But it's interesting. Now, Archer's Parapet. Uh, again, there's no Defender theme, so you're not getting much of a payoff. And If it was Tap, deal of damage, kind of like Lobber Crew, I think it'd be better, but two mana's a lot. You're going to have other things to do, so I'd not be playing him at all. Now, Waken the Bear. Pretty good trick, a little expensive. This used to Primal Rage, or... Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called. You, this card used to cost two mana. Where it was really good. So, I'd rather play just like Aspect of Hydra or Ranger's Guile. Because this is counting on your opponent's blocking. So, not really worried about that. Dragon Scale Boon. This card is Savage Surge, but you keep the counters. Again, the counters aren't super relevant unless you have First Strike or Reach, but it just costs too much. I'd rather play any other trick. Feed the Clan. If there was a straight burn deck in the format, this could be playable, but. There's not. People are killing you with creatures, which are repeatable damage sources. So even if you have a power with four and you gain ten life, it's just not good enough. You'd rather play Nightly as Disciple and play a creature and block their creatures and gain some incidental life. Or play something like this, Highland Game. This card's great against aggro decks. You trade with something and then gain two life. It's fine. Uh, so pretty much only the mono green decks against aggro decks want this, so it's kind of bad sideboard card maybe now hooting mandrels this card is actually really good it dodges a lot of the removal in the format and it can come down on turn three uh you know your opponent can go turn one mystic turn two scout the borders you know and already they have four cards in hand and you'll, they'll potentially have three mana so that's seven mana and he only costs six so yeah, this guy comes down hard and fast. He's leaping at you like a crazy ape. 
So watch out for him. Dodges a lot of removal in the format too. So, and he has trample, so he's pretty good with combat tricks and things to protect him. You try to double block him, and if they have one removal or trick, they get to trample and deal, you know, kill both your guys. It's a good card. I said it's a fine playable in green decks that are specifically trying to self mill. Kinchi Warden, never playing it, not aggressive. Longshot Squad, we've noted his combos before, but I'm not really looking to play a card like this. It's too slow. Outlasting, after playing it as a 4 drop, that's pretty mediocre. Just doesn't keep you in the, the game enough. We need more Outlast payoff. So hopefully there's some, maybe some more Outlast guys in the next set at Common, but I doubt it. Um, naturalize potential sideboard card but right now there's not very many good artifacts or champions for that matter so don't even worry about it Saigo Archer no you have other ways to interact with flyers Savage Punch fantastic card Pretty good with the mandrels, any other four Nessian Asp. Um, yeah, I like it in the green decks. But that's probably the only deck it's going in. It's got the borders, same thing. Very good in the green self mill deck, but no other reason to play a card like this. Smoke Teller, no. Tuscalocidon, not likely. Uh, if you're going to be spending 6 mana for a 6-5, you get 2 more toughness and the additional flexibility to morph it to play the Loxodon, so I'd be more inclined to play Loxodon if I was going to pay any of these huge dorks. Huge idiots. He is also the king in the morph, so he has that going for him, so hopefully, you know, he, he looks like he's from beyond the wall, so I'd watch out for him. He's probably going to take everybody out. This is the Abomination of Gudul. This is actually the first morph that I tried to play with, and he's pretty good. A 3-4 flyer that loots every turn, potentially, is solid. The problem is, he's hard to cast, and morphing him makes him susceptible to removal. So, and heroic creatures just kind of laugh at it. So I don't think it's worth it, but he's close to being playable as far as the morphs go. Same thing with all these guys. Uh, three color decks are really tough. They're not a big enough payoff to play. Now, the Ponyback Brigade I think is the best because you can play the Rush of Battle, Trumpet Blast, Warrior theme deck. Um, but these other guys, they just cost too much and they're easy to kill. Um, I'd like to see someone try to break them, but I don't think it's going to be me. Absent Guide is probably the next best, because it can gain you life, and that's a huge life linker. You protect it, you can do pretty well, but it's easy to kill if you morph it, and it's easy to deal with it, you know, and have it be irrelevant if it costs uh, six mana. So, not too excited about any of these guys. Banners, completely unplayable. Lands of Clarity, completely unplayable. The dual lands are all fantastic. They're basically just better than Guild Gates, in this format at least, so it makes it a little bit harder for aggro decks to deal sometimes the last couple of points because you can incidentally gain anywhere from 4, 8 to 12 life over the course of the game, depending on how many of these you are playing. And they come in all combinations. So, I really like them. Good way to fix mana in the format. So, kind of a review. Cons helps mainly support, I think, the heroic decks in the format pretty well. And the heroic decks are the primary good decks in the format, whether it's mono red or mono white or mono green. They just have the most synergy to beat people down quickly. And all the removal is insanely expensive. Except for a few things that are kind of conditional. 
So, the fact that black doesn't have cheap removal that can kill anything, you know, lends black to being the devotion deck with merchant, but it lost a lot of good devotion creatures. Um, but yeah, so if I had to make recommendations, I'd say try to build around treasure crews. I would say for the format, try to build some sort of white heroic or red heroic aggro deck. Those are probably the two tier one decks. Um, or mono black devotion deck. Those I think are the pillars of the format. I'd say stick to those. If you make some brews, see if you can play against those decks, and if you can beat mono red, mono white, mono black, um, then you're on to something good. And then beyond that, then bring your brew to SPDC or MPDC. It's always, you know, 11:30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. No idea what time that is in Europe, but everybody from Europe likes to join. Uh, so yeah, that's my review. Just going through these cards pretty much as fast as I can, and you know, hope you guys enjoy my thoughts on some of these cards and yeah if you got any disagreements I love disagreeing with people if some, if you think something I said was unplayable or something I said was playable and you disagree you know I'd love to chat about it but for the most part I think these are kind of easy evaluations it's more has to do with what does the format look like and how are the new decks going to shape up and compete against each other so Go ahead and check out pdcmagic.com to see all the latest decks winning the various uh, competitive events. Alright, so thanks for listening. I'm out.